Welcome to the Stock Car Spectacle. I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Mike Gamble. And I'm Nick Kinzel. And he's back again for more for the Stock Car Spectacle. Connor Bunn, thanks for joining us again. a while since you've been on the show yeah i appreciate you guys having me on it's it's definitely been a minute since i've come on but i'm ready to knock the rust off and get back at it all, all right, right man all right so we usually have our die cast of the week so connor what did you bring for us this week uh in honor of this guy's hot dead last finish last night um <laughs> I'm going to break out because I, I feel like a win is coming up soon, despite how bad and poor his luck has been. Brought out his 2017, um, or excuse me, 2018 Pocono win. Diecast has still got the uh, still got the little like tire clippings and and candy and, and stuff on it. So this is my only race win diecast. So we're going to bring out the Caramel m M&M scheme for Dalton. <laughs> That's a good one to have, man. That's a really damn good looking scheme. Yeah, I was I was always very hype on uh, on the caramel scheme for some reason. I thought just that base, uh, like purplish blue with all the all the M and M's on it, looked really good. So and yeah. the fact he he ran really well in that scheme. Yeah, too. he won a Cause... lot with that paint scheme. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, like, I just like how it's something with... different too. He's got so many of his schemes are based off uh, the the that the yellow that he'll normally run. Then you get the the caramel, which gives you like that bluish purple. It's just a, a different look and typical with Kyle Busch's paint schemes are always on point. Yeah, I was thinking the other day. I was like, hmm, like what are we gonna see from from Mars and stuff now? Like, I mean, they've pretty much run every color. And you know, to be honest with you, you know how his main paint scheme is like a base yellow and it's got the M and M's on it. I kind of want to see them run like a like a light brown. Like like the brown M M&M and M bag, and then have like the M and Ms on it, and just see what that looks like, because uh, he's never really had like a brown M M&M, and uh, M base colored car, so uh, it'd be cool to see what that looks like. But his Halloween schemes are always my favorite too. So oh, yeah, those really kick ass. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, no doubt. All right, Nick, what'd you bring for us today for the diecast of the week? <laughs> All right, well, last week I almost made the mistake of bringing this one on because I thought <laughs> last week was Michigan Race Weekend, but this week is Michigan Race Weekend. So I brought out the, the crown jewel of my diecast collection. This is the 2011 uh, Trevor Bain JDRF uh, paint scheme, and this one is so rare. <laughs> it was a hard – I didn't even find it. But I would see Nike Bay for like over 100 bucks. So my dad was able to find it. He got it from uh, He started 20th in the race, finished 23rd. Not his best run, but yeah, this this thing is rare to come by because he only ran this scheme. So definitely the crown jewel in my diecast collection. All right, man. All right. I was definitely going to hope Ian picked me and I was going to run to my cabinet and play that first just to snake Nick since he was so excited last week to play it. Well, first time on the show, so I would I would have killed you. Yeah, there there have been many a nights where Nick's over at my place, like man, before he got that one, man, what do I got to do to get that one off you? What do I got to do to get that Trevor car off you? <laughs> it's like the one that I needed, man. And now that I have it, it's just like, whew, all right. Yeah, that would that was your holy grail car for the T Bang collection, no doubt about it. Absolutely. So all right, Mike, what'd you bring for us today? Well, guys, we're going to the Irish Hills, one of my favorite places to watch a race in person. Was really looking forward to taking you guys there, but obviously that's not going to work out. But what we know about the Irish Hills, that's Ford's backyard. That's Ford's territory. Uh, Harvick and Joey Logano got it done. So got to bring a Ford on the show. So I went with the Ryan Blaney PPG car. Ooh, so, very nice. That yeah. was That's one of my favorite paint schemes he's run. Yeah, I was really sad when uh, they took it over to Kozlowski this year. That's one of those paint schemes where I feel like, like 20 years from now, like we're going to look back at that and be like, that's probably one of the sexiest cars 
to run just because just the way the blue meshes with like fades into the pink and the slight yellow and stuff on that i had the honor of watching blaney rip that around bristol in the spring of 2019 and you think the scheme looks good on tv man like that thing going around bristol i was like man i really love i really love the scheme in person it kind of like it gave me a it gave me like a Rainbow Warrior vibes in a way, even though that the yeah. colors were, yeah. were were different, and it it, it, fit, it definitely fit Blaney more than it does Kozlowski. But you know what are you gonna do? Yeah, see that was one of those cars. I just I finally ended up buying it because he was running it. It seemed like he was always running at tracks where Blaney was running well. So I'm like, do I really want to buy this? And then like next week it's gonna be a race win. <laughs> yeah. So I finally just bit the yeah. bull. I'm like, you know what? I at least gotta have it once. So. Well, it just sucks that it went to Kislowski because Ryan Blaney, that was like his best looking car because we're accustomed to Ryan Blaney running some pretty eh looking race cars. So when TPG left, I was like, well, damn. Yeah, we are the yeah, ugly no. paint scheme champions of the world over at the 12 team. No doubt about that. So, <laughs> See, I wish I wish PPG was his primary because I, I honestly associate that with Blaney more than I do like Menards. When I think of Menards, like for some reason, I still can't get Paul Menard out of my head. Uh, well, and or, it it kind of is his name. I, 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 I tend to do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, and like that, and it's starting to become Brandon Jones because Brandon's dad has such a hand in Menards and stuff too. So yeah. it's like when I see, it, and it what stumps me the most is when DeBetadetta runs the Menard scheme as well. And I'm like, uh, 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 yeah, who, uh, who, like, yeah. Well, how many times will him and Blaney be running like almost identical schemes, yeah. and then Nick and I like, yeah, I mean, Blaney made a pass. Oh no, that was your buddy. Oh no, that was your guy. Oh no, that was your guy. <laughs> I got confused yesterday because uh, the one, the car that Ryan Blaney ran yesterday that looked like one of Matty D's schemes. So I was like, wait, Matty D's not starting eighth. Like, what's going on here? And then I look back and I see the the, <laughs> the motorcraft car. I was like, ah, oh, okay, okay. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. so confusing. With that, if you look away for a quick second, it takes you about a lap just to get reacclimated as to which one's who. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, imagine being their spotter, dude. I couldn't imagine being like <laughs> a kid spotting one of them. Be like, imagine oh, inside. being the oh, wait, spotter no. for JD Motorsports where all their cars are just plain red. Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> Like, they'll just be like, inside clear, inside clear. Be like, but I'm in turn three right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> There's no one yeah, around like, me. <laughs> like, yeah. like Pocono, when uh, all the JD Motorsports cars were like three wide at one point. Like, I can imagine like being like the spotter, the one that's like in the middle, just like, uh, uh, where, where are you at? Where, 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 I don't know which one you are, bud. <laughs> uh, three wide somewhere. Three wide somewhere. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys, so for my die cast of the week, I had to bring in Kevin Harvick's 2019 Michigan win. Uh, absolute beauty car. I love his Mobile One paint scheme with the flames on there. It reminds me of his old good wrench car that he had back in the day. And I know, Mike, you were there for this race. I was. Uh, yeah, and uh, absolutely incredible. And he got to take Keelan around for a ride, did a burnout with him in the car. I thought that was really cool. But, uh, yeah, absolutely beautiful paint scheme for him to get it done at uh, Michigan two years in a row. If I remember right, too, I sent you some up, low, up close and personal footage of him doing burnouts in that thing because we were sitting just off uh, turn one, basically, and he came right down by us after the win. Yep, I remember seeing those videos that you sent me, man. That uh, I, I am jealous, but then we got to see a victory later at Indy. Yeah. Ian, how come, you didn't, how come you didn't make it to the Michigan race? That was one, I think it was like a last minute thing me and our buddy Jeremy put together. And then one of my other buddies went with us too. I don't think it was like a super planned thing. It was like the day or two before. Like, oh, hey, you want to go to Michigan? Well, it's I think me tough. and Nick just got back from Iowa like the week before. Yeah, right. I think that yeah, was part of it too. Yeah. I was yeah. Town for both of those Michigan races last year. I was supposed to go to both of those. And somebody else had uh, better ideas. And I couldn't get yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to name names, but... We're not going to name names, but yeah. All right, guys. So before we get into our show, uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all other podcast platforms. And I'd like to do a big shout-out to Adam Cristofaro, Matt Klug, and Jack Kovach for making our music for us. You can follow them on SoundCloud, and their link is in the description. So... 
Let's get into our New Hampshire review. It was the Foxwoods 301. Uh, Eric Almarola started on the pole yet again from a random drawing. Guys, how many times has he started on the front row so far since we've came back from the pandemic? It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I'm getting really close to call BS on these uh, on these random draws. They, they're just going by alphabetical order, it seems like. Yeah. Double A gets the pole every time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will be definitely interested to see, like, at the end of the season, looking at Eric Almarola's, like, average starting to, like, position at the end of the year and see where it matches up compared to other drivers because this is absolutely ridiculous how he ends up in the top three every single week. So far, the luck of the draw. So far, he's got an average starting uh, position of 8.3 on the year. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) Solid. Yeah, but. Yeah, sign me up for that one. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. But that lead didn't last long because uh, Brad Kozlowski came around, took the lead from him on lap four. And yeah, Brad basically took off from there. And then uh, early trouble for Rowdy. He blew a tire uh, from a major tire rub after slamming into the wall. Then he slammed into the wall real hard, ending his day. Just tough luck for Rowdy this year. He Just everything is happening to him. Dude, when, it, when it's bad, it's bad. And I think that's as about as rock bottom as you can get. I don't ever recall watching a race where Kyle was out of it in the first 20 laps and there's not many races where he's finished dead last either and it's just like it's just like yeah there's no words at this point it's like how what is what is this and why does why can we not slump or get out of this slump uh, I don't know what caused the tire to go fat or flat I, I presume it was because he hit the wall a little Yeah, he smacked the wall a little bit on the back stretch and then just had a major tire rub. Yeah. Well, what was really kind of crazy to see with all that was he looked super fast until that tire went down. I know it was early because it happened within the first 20 laps of the race, but there was a little while there where he was looking pretty fast and I think Connor stuff. Yeah, (laughs) and guys, Denny Hamlin was looking very aggressive at the start of this race. Uh, he kind of got into it with Brad Kozlowski, gave him a little nudge to take the lead, and they were battling for the lead there. And uh, that was just exciting racing in New Hampshire. And this package with New Hampshire has just been incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we I personally do not like New Hampshire, but, man, these past three seasons have really, have made it hard to stick with that statement because, like you said, we had the big motor, the small blade, and it put on for an awesome show. We saw battles for the lead. We saw battles for a position. And the aggressive racing early, like, you're not a race fan if you did not find that in the team. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I thought uh, the early stages of the race were a lot of fun. Uh, Blaney was up there with Kozlowski and Danny battling. And uh, you're... T- we were having conversations about whether teammates were going to have to move each other early in a race. And that was just a lot of fun, a lot of good battles going on there. Guys just kind of just nudging each other up the track, taking different lines through the turns too. Um, just really fun racing there. I, I thought uh, the first first stage was exceptional when it comes to entertainment value. Oh, no yeah, doubt. It, no doubt. It, it reminded me of like uh, late model racing at like your local short, short track. I mean, you had three guys um, – duking it out and they were all really close to each other i think at one point you know hamlin moved to 12 and then he got up to keselowski and couldn't quite get it done and then blaney got back to him and moved hamlin out of the way and he got to keselowski couldn't quite get it done and they all eventually ended up around each other i mean that's like as a nascar fan that's like you know the best racing you could possibly ask for and uh you know it, it was definitely enjoyable and encouraging to see especially uh after how vocal i've been about the package this year but (laughs) big motor small blade yeah you gotta love it you gotta love it and then guys we have more bad luck for jimmy johnson he gets loose after contact with boyer out of turn two johnson goes for a spin it's just how much more bad luck is this guy going to go through in his final full-time year? Actually, he kind of hinted at coming back next year because Blake Shelton kind of begged him on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, let's we'll see how true that is. But, no, it just looked like Boyer's spotter didn't know that Johnson was there, and it just like Boyer just came down and 
stored him. And well, I mean, Johnson was already running on the apron. Yeah, like, what, what, what more do you want him to that's, go? That's the perfect. lane that Johnson chose, so Boyer was just going to stick where he was. Not Boyer's Bad problem. Boy. Bad luck, Johnson. Recipe for disaster right there. <laughs> what you going to do, man? Yeah. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what happens with him for next year. Kind of like you uh, you hinted at, Ian. Um, based on tweets from Jimmy, it looks a lot like he may run in some capacity next year. I doubt it'll be a full season. He was kind of hinting at maybe like a like a partial season thing. So that would be nice. You know, there are a lot of racetracks this year that we're not going to get to see uh, Jimmy at with uh, the no fans with the current pandemic. I think uh, it would be a really nice little touch for him to come back and run about half a season or so you know, kind of get to some of those tracks where people aren't going to get to see him otherwise. Right. Yeah, I'd definitely like to see him one more time run at Chicagoland. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I'd, I'd, I'd love to see him do one more full season. How possible that is, I don't know, um, especially with, you know, how silly season is and so many guys free agents. I mean, in, in theory, it'd, it'd be easy for people to say, oh, well, Jimmy, just do one more year. But, you know, on the back end, that affects a lot of other guys because a lot of people are, are jostling for that 48 as well and it's getting to the point where it's like man jimmy might have to he might have to win to get into the playoffs because you know if they're not running into bad luck then they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot here lately and the last thing i want to see is is jimmy miss the playoffs this yeah. year after the year after just the the wild year that it's been i mean we all want to see him get a win but we all want to see him be competitive as well so uh i don't know how much truth there is to the merit of him doing a part-time schedule next year uh but i do think it'd be really cool for him to do a lot of races and and get that proper send off with the fans that he deserves yeah, yeah. Absolutely. jimmy johnson is currently out of the playoffs so yeah he's got some work to do danny hamlin going on to win stage one that's his fourth stage win of 2020 uh, so far, he's got 29 playoff points with his five wins, so he is sitting well into the playoffs right now. He can coast his way into the round eight for sure. He can yeah, coast it's... his way into the round of four, man. He's going to pull a Kyle Busch in last year's playoffs and just cruise all the way to Homestead. Hey, you got you to gotta stack, stack up that premium for the insurance, but uh, no, it, man, like it's almost nuts to see how – Denny Hamlin has turned around. Yeah, you almost think like the driver of the 18 and the 11 swapped uh, this right. past year. Because, I mean, who would have thought that, you know, Denny Hamlin in the year he had in 2018 where people were questioning his career uh, would turn around this big and him and Gabe Hart would probably, I mean, you know, the four is, the four is up there with them. But, you know, the 11 has kind of been the class of the field the whole season. Whether they're running well or not, they always find a way. Uh, to finish up front so uh yeah denny is definitely for sure my regular season champion and it's gonna be interested to see if he can actually close it out this year yeah we'll yeah. see if he can hold it off yeah i agree denny's in a class of his own right now um you know he's we've heard interviews and stuff where he's talked about just trying to be a smarter race car driver and it's apparent week in and week out he he just looks so much more intelligent than a lot of the field um when he has the car to do so he can he sets guys up with moves and stuff that it's like he's playing chess and they're playing checkers he'll purposely take an inferior line just so later on he can take uh his preferred line when he has a chance to pass and do just that uh you never see stuff like that from a lot of guys usually you know you're gonna do what you gotta do to get there and then when you get there you figure out what your move's gonna be but he's already thinking so many steps ahead he knows what's gonna happen you know with stuff like that before it even happens it's he's yeah it just mentally seems like a step above most of the guys out there and uh, it's really shown in his results so i think it's uh gonna take some kind of big swing for somebody to kind of catch him this season yeah, it's just crazy because, like, we were talking about 2018, everybody's like, oh, get this guy out of Joe Gibbs race, and his career's over with. 2019, goes out and wins seven races, and now here in 2020, he's got five already. So he's stepped up because usually you think Denny Hamlin has one good year, and then the next year he's going to run really poorly, but that just hasn't been it. So, yeah, he's definitely the class of the field right now, and I expect him to just keep getting better and better as the season goes on. Why, watching him drive, and it, it's it's almost crazy to me because I'm like I'm a new F1 fan, and I've recently started watching F1. 
but watching him drive and like his smarts behind the wheel and the way he uses his mind is almost f1 driver like and how strategic he mm-hmm. is about everything he does behind the wheel and you can tell just just that alone puts him leaps and boundaries over the guys who are running third fourth fifth on a consistent basis i mean it's just like the 11 i mean kevin kevin's right there with them and you know they'll go back and forth but um you know the third place car you know has nothing cannot touch Denny <laughs> hamlin this year so it, it's it's really crazy to see him turn it around like that which i'm happy for him you know per se yeah, it sucks that it's at kyle's mercy and and stuff but you know good for Denny. <laughs> Hey man, he's winning me a lot of money this year. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's for sure. no kidding. My goodness. Yep. But then we had a caution on lap ninety three. We heard about it all day, but rain finally came to the racetrack. But thank God, it was only a tiny little sprinkle. There was no red flag. They were able to stay yellow, and then they went back to racing. Harvick took the lead because uh, he didn't take any tires with those pit stops. But then Hamlin eventually took that lead on lap 104. And then Kozlowski came back up to Hamlin. They were battling for the lead. And he took the lead away from Hamlin. And then we had a caution with seven to go in stage two. Matt Kenseth got loose exiting turn two. Made slight contact with Kurt Busch. He spun. He was able to uh, to save it staying off of the inside wall. But that's not the end of it for Matt Kenseth. We'll get into that in a little bit. Then we had more Kislowski and Hamlin drama. They were battling for the stage win. Kislowski wins stage two. So good for Kislowski to get that stage win right there. Absolutely. Yeah, that was a fun little battle there at the end. Absolutely. Gave me uh, gave me 2019 vibes at the end of the race with him and Kevin. Uh, yeah, no kidding. You almost, you almost wish you could have seen that as, at the end of the third stage. But, man, that was like it was like a flashback of last year all over again, especially the outcome, too, because Denny still didn't. Still didn't get the stage win. He didn't get the win last year, but uh, right, it was definitely 2019 vibes. Oh, yeah, yeah, that little that first stage or so was almost like a little microcosm of the the whole 2019 race in a lot of ways. Right. Yeah, yeah, basically. And then we had more trouble for Matt Kenseth. Caution on lap 196. Matt Kenseth got into the wall after blowing his right front tire from damage from the previous wreck that he had. And then another caution for Matt Kenseth on lap 204 for another flat right tire, and he hit hey, the wall again. Fun? Do you think he had fun at New Hampshire yesterday? I think he had a great time. Man, I just I, he should have never picked up the phone when CGR <laughs> called him, man. Don't pick up that phone, man. Oh, yeah, maybe, man. you know, maybe the third time would be a charm because the phone rang with Jack Roush called him in, in 2018. Oh, he picked that up, and that didn't, that didn't go so hot. Phone rang this year, and you know, it's not going so hot. So maybe maybe he'll know for, for next time when somebody needs a replacement. But no, I mean, oh, man. Uh, Kansas, Ooh, thought, just, man. Yeah, especially, I mean, he came out strong, got a first top 10 in his first race, and people are like, oh, man, Kansas is a playoff lock. He's back. But it's almost like every week you expect him to be the caution and stuff. So, you know, bad luck, Kenseth. Uh He's right up there with Johnson, who just has, like, weird luck. And, like, just to see them both run bad, it's like, what is this? Yeah, this is very strange to see. Yeah, we are uh, we are not in the 2010s anymore, boys, where those two will be up there battling for race wins and championships every time you turn around. Time it is a whole new era. That's just crazy because it's not even like the 42 is a bad ride. It's just... Kenseth just struggling because, yeah, like we, like we were saying, after that first top 10, he got really like, oh, Kenseth's going to win a race. Kenseth's going to make the playoffs. And now it's just like, oh, my God, is he going to wreck this week? It's crazy. He should have just retired 2017. That should have been it. His final win, Phoenix, he went out on top, basically. But then he had to go back to the six. Now he has to go back to the 42. And it's all just been <laughs> What, Poor guy. What, what, oh my what, God. Ride, what rides what rides next to be honest with you like yeah, where's he gonna what's gonna, gonna be the next ride that he takes over <laughs> whoever you know gets taken out or gets in some kind of trouble again we'll see but my god send i don't know. just don't pick up the phone matt just stay home it's not working out for you <laughs> seven years seven years from now Haley deegan's gonna be on maternity leave and they're gonna call they're going to call him Matt Kenseth, and Kenseth's going to come in there at, like, late 50s, early 60s yeah. and try and run. Matt, <laughs> <laughs> going to step in the race car and Mark Martin, Matt. 
the true <laughs> super sub. Yeah. <laughs> and then late in the race, we didn't know if most of the competitors would have enough gas to make it all the way to finish the race. We thought Kozlowski and a lot of the top leaders weren't going to make it and Kevin Harvick would get the win. But Kozlowski proved us wrong. He held on to get his third win of 2020. Another dominating race by Brad Kozlowski, guys. So any thoughts on that win with Brad Kozlowski? No, it, great to see Brad run well. Um, and then obviously the news we get later today that he's going to re-sign with Penske is great to see as well. Um, I think he kind of put them in a position with how well he's run this year so far. It's like you look kind of silly if you don't re-sign the guy. Uh, I'm sure that was probably the intention the whole way anyway because he's been that good. Um, he's been a staple there for how long now? But, uh, yeah, really good day to see them. Uh, those guys run well. Um, obviously, being a Blaney fan, I like seeing the Penske guys run well. Maybe not so much with Mr. Logano from time to time, but uh, <laughs> that's a, di- a horse of a different color. So, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we've had all this talk since we've come back about Harvick and Denny Hamlin dominating races. And here comes Brad Kozlowski. Very good racetrack for him. Gets another lobster. What is this? Is this third win in New Hampshire, I believe? I believe so. And then yeah, he gets the he gets the contract extension following that. So yeah, it's a it's a good day to be a Brad Kozlowski fan. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, for I just sure. want to know: Do you guys think he's gonna get another win this year? Because he's had his quota. He's been three he every year. Well, That's his three. third. Gotta I don't shut know, him down man. Now season's over for the two team. It would be I'm... nice. It would definitely be nice to see somebody other than Harvick and Hamlin win. So if Kaz wants to keep picking them off. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about that. I was just thinking about that today. How you know, I was like, well, because that's because it's third and win. So you know, he technically he's peaked. You know, <laughs> he usually falls off. But you know, he does. He's he's got he's got Bullens on the box now, and not Paul Wolf. So I think that's a that's something to factor into it. And I think they've it's something about Brad this year. He's he's looked a little more, more consistent than in years past too. When he gets like three wins, so I would not be surprised to see him rip off a couple more wins. Um, he could, Hey, he could even make the final four, to be honest with you. I mean, that team, there's no telling the momentum they might carry into the playoffs. So, and Brad's grown on me. So I don't, I don't mind seeing, I don't mind seeing Brad, uh, get a victory every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Hey, it's possible. And, uh, he finally, cr- uh, crossed off another, uh, paint scheme from his cursed paint scheme list. He never won with that patriotic Miller light scheme. He did that in the Coke 600. He's never won with his Alliance truck parts paint scheme either. So he finally did that too. So, uh, that's good to see him uh, showing love for all of his sponsors. Oh, yeah. Always good for the wallet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all right, guys. So I think that will do it for our show. Thanks for tuning in. Connor, thanks again for joining us, man. Guys, make sure to follow Connor on Twitter and Instagram. And I believe you're starting up your podcast again. It's not going to be for the lead now, right? Uh. Yeah, it's a little tongue in cheek right now, but it's in the it's in the works of coming back, and uh, so we should have some more content for you guys soon. Uh, and, uh, there'll be more more details with for certain stamps on it to come out shortly. So stay tuned for that. But uh, for sure, give me a follow on Instagram for all the all the updates on that. And I appreciate you guys having me on uh, the show again. It's been a little bit, but uh, glad to be back on. Had to knock the rust off a little bit, but good to see you guys again. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. We always love having you on. Appreciate it. And and guys, make sure to follow me, Nick, and Mike on Twitter and Instagram as well, along with the Stock Car Spectacle social media accounts. Uh, If you're listening to us, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. And if you're watching us, make sure to check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other podcast platforms. Again, thanks to Adam Cristofaro, Matt Klug, and Jack Kovach for providing music for our show. Make sure to check out their sound clouds. The links are below. Make sure to check out our buddy Patrick Cotto with the Cotto's Mojo podcast. It's a great Chicagoland sports-based podcast. It's available on all podcast platforms. And last but not least, make sure to follow our friends at Ashland Heddens Racing. The Central States uh, Region Super Cup Series just got their season started. Ashland has started uh, her season looking fast, so good luck to Ashland and the whole crew. So, guys, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Make sure to check out our latest uh, episodes this week with our Michigan Road America preview, Kinzel's Classroom, and the Gambler's Picks. So, I'm Ian Jortson. I'm Mike Gamble. And I'm Nick Kinzel. Then I'm Connor Bunn. <laughs> there thanks it for, is. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Mm-hmm.